I am very excited to have George Hickenlooper with me now. He is the director of Casino Jack, the movie about uh, Jack Abramoff. And for people who don't remember, that was the biggest scandal in Washington since uh, Watergate. Exciting, true story made into a movie starring another great actor, Kevin Spacey. So I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Tell us about Casino Jack. Well, Casino Jack is a film I was really excited to do. I, I'm a political junkie. I watch MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. I like to get all perspectives, uh, both the left and the right. And uh, when the story broke, it was so gothic. It, was, it wasn't all the president's men. It was more the Sopranos, more Goodfellas. It, the story was so outrageous, what Jack Abramoff had done as a lobbyist in Washington. I thought this would make a great movie. And, uh, and so uh, we got the script written by a great, talented screenwriter in Canada, Norm Snyder, and I approached Kevin, and he loved it. And it's a tour de force performance from Kevin. I think it's the best thing he's done since American Beauty, Usual Suspects. And uh, it's a really fun, comedic look at how Washington works. And I say comedic because most political films are kind of earnest and heavy-handed. This film is actually very funny because the actions of Jack Abramoff were so outrageous they they sort of exceeded what satire is. You, you couldn't actually write this stuff. Um, it, it's all true. It's a true story, and it's fun and it's smart. And um, it also stars Kelly Preston, um, Barry Pepper, and John Lovitz. And um, it, it's a it's it's a great time. Now Kelly Preston is John Travolta's wife. Yeah. Right. What role does she play in the movie? She plays Pam Abramoff, um, Jack Abramoff's wife. Um, and I actually got to meet, uh, when we were preparing the film, when I was writing the script, um, I visited Jack Abramoff in prison um, five times, and I got to meet his wife and his family, and he had, n had not done any interviews, but I think he was so demonized in the press when the scandal broke in 2005, 2006, I think he felt he like had nothing to lose. So I went to Cumberland, Maryland prison. It's uh, in the very f f furthest eastern part of Maryland, and sat with him five times. He gave me five like six hour interviews, 30 hours. And a lot of that I incorporated into the screenplay. And I'm also a documentary filmmaker. So I did directed uh, Hearts of Darkness about the making of Apocalypse Now and Mayor of the Sunset Strip. So I was using my documentary background kind of as a narrative filmmaker. So I was merging the two disciplines in a way. And, uh, and so yes, Kelly plays Pam Abramoff uh, and uh, she's now pregnant. We just, I just saw her two weeks ago at the uh, Toronto Film Festival. She came up, she's just ready to have her baby. and. Uh, and, and it was uh, for her, I think, it, you know, she made the picture. We shot it in May 2009. It was uh, four months after she lost her son, Jet. Um, and she wanted to get back into work. And it was very emotional for her. And I think Kelly, it's the best thing she's ever done because I think she was trying to transfer some of that, uh, some of that sadness into, into the performance uh, of a woman who's like losing uh, her husband and, and, and it was a horrible scandal. So Kelly's amazing. I love Kelly. And the horrible scandal was actually um, his charges of swindling millions from Native American Indians right. and in their quest to start casinos on their land. Yeah. And that's what ultimately he was convicted of. Well, actually, he was actually convicted uh, on a, he wasn't convicted of that. He was actually convicted uh, for a, a, on a wire transfer in Florida when he was trying to buy a casino. Um, and actually, there's two sides to that story. Um, Abramoff's, and the film is told from Abramoff's point of view. Abramoff believes that he was thrown under the bus by the Republicans, that he was a very good friend of President George W. Bush. And when the scandal broke, Bush distanced himself, obviously. Um, but that the Republicans kind of threw him under the bus to sort of say that the lobbying problem had been solved. Um, because he had, I mean, he was brought up before, in front of a Senate hearing before senators who had helped get elected. So there's a lot of hypocrisy. Um, As a matter of fact, I think I remember the news always showing pictures of him with the president, with the vice president, yeah, with different lawmakers to show how close well, he, they were. Well, he didn't know Karl Rove. They would go back to college Republicans back when they were, you know, in college. Um, but um, but there, look, a lot of Native American tribes were angry at him, but a lot feel that he, they, he saved them billions of dollars. I mean, uh, John McCain wanted to uh, tax all the Native American casinos, um, and he prevented that from having Abramoff. So actually, there's one tribe, I don't know if it's the Kickapoo, or it's not the Choctaw, but one of the tribes actually built a hospital and named it the Abramoff Hospital because he had saved them so much money. So there's two sides to the story. So you've gone to see him in prison. How is he doing? What's going on with his life now? Well, he just got out of prison in July, and he's living in a halfway house in Baltimore. He's actually working as an accountant in a kosher 
pizza parlor. He's an Orthodox Jew, and um, he's doing okay. Uh, I talked to him through a, a mutual friend, and he um, he's actually going to, he may do some press um, in December when he gets out of prison. I think 60 Minutes is going to do a piece on him and our movie, so I'm excited about that. Um, but uh, he's a good guy. I, I actually like him. As a, you know, he, he obviously skirted the law there and pushed the envelope, but he's a very charming, likable guy. So now your movie is going to be coming out in December so that it, uh, is, it can be an Oscar contender. How, and they, it, Knock on wood. <laughs> the, uh, the buzz is so great about it so far because you've played at other festivals. Yeah. So t t talk about that a bit. Well, actually, the Hamptons is the second festival. We premiered it. It was one of the 15 galas at Toronto. We got rave reviews. Roger Ebert called it stunning. The LA Times loved it. Hollywood Reporter. We got amazing reviews. Uh, Kevin is a really, you know, Kevin's amazing in it. Uh, it's Ke Kevin Spacey, Kevin, of course. Kevin Spacey's amazing in it. And uh, there's potential Oscar for him. Uh, you know, it's a very competitive year, um, so you never know. And he's won two before. Um, so we'll see what happens. But we've got a great Tom Ortenberg, who ran Harvey Weinstein's uh, marketing department, uh, is running our Oscar campaign. So we'll see what happens, but knock on wood. Now, you already showed here at the Hamptons Festival on Friday. How did that screening go? Screening went amazing. It was it was packed, sold out. Um, people loved it. Uh, I was really excited. I, and and it, I was telling my friend Evelina um, today on the phone. She she was she, she's my girlfriend. She lives in in the Cayman Islands. But I was saying she asked me how it went, and I told her, you know, it's a it's a um, tough New York crowd. You know, they're smart, and it went well. And I said, okay. Phew. It went well, so I, I feel good. I mean, the Hamptons audience is a tough audience. They're smart, they're educated, they're from New York. Uh, I'm, I'm in good shape, I think. I think I, I really hope people come see it Sunday. Okay. Right, it's playing Sunday in East Hampton as well. Yeah, so, yeah. And I hear that's sold out. I can't even get a ticket. Oh, I have one for you in my part. <laughs> I just have to have a couple of tickets here. Oh, aren't I lucky? Look at that. Thank you. I am excited. Casino Jack. All right. And uh, people can go on the Internet to find out more infor information yep. about it. Yep. What, what is your hope that people take away from the film? Well, I think, uh, first I want people to be entertained. I'm not trying to, you know, as Louis B. Mara said, if you want to send a message, call Western Union. <laughs> I just want people to be entertained and, and that they can talk about the subject of, 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 of Washington. I, I think, you know, I think there needs to be reform. I think you need lobbyists in Washington, essentially, because without lobbyists, Washington would come to a grinding halt. I mean, there's so much legislation that comes across, you know, co a congressman's or congresswoman's desk. They need a lobbyist to inform them more than what to vote on. Um, um, so I think that I think if there's any reform, it needs to be campaign finance reform. I think you've got to level the playing field there. Um, but I hope people come away just being entertained. It's fun and it's smart, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully it'll provoke some conversation. I actually need to ask you what else you've done, and I'm sorry I neglected my duties oh, no, sorry. and didn't ask. But tell us about some of your other movies. Uh, I, uh, the, my, I directed a movie called Factory Girl about Edie Sedgwick and Andy Warhol that starred Sienna Miller. Um, I directed. Um, uh, Hearts of Darkness, which was about the making of Apocalypse Now. I directed the original Sling Blade with Billy Bob Thornton. I directed Man from Elysian Fields with Mick Jagger and Andy Garcia and James Coburn. And that actually played that played here at this festival as well. Oh, it did. I didn't show yeah. up for that one. No, you didn't, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good film. Uh, Mayor of the Sunset Strip, which is a rock and roll documentary. I've done a lot. I've been around a while. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested on AMC uh, Tuesday night, 11 p.m. Morgan Spurlock, who directed Super Size Me, um, directed a documentary about me and John Sayles, another great director, uh, at the Toronto Film Festival and our experience of premiering our movies last month. So check out AMC uh, at 11 p.m. on Tuesday. Okay, well, congratulations. Sorry, is that, it's a competitive uh, station. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, it's, we don't mind letting our viewers know that you're out there and you're on the air and cool. that's quite all right with us. Thank well, you. congratulations, Casino Jack, and I have a ticket. <laughs>